I want you to hit me as hard as you can. Yes, we've got plenty of superhero movies coming out this year, but none have been as eagerly awaited as a showdown between the Man of Steel and the Dark Knight in Batman vs Superman Dawn of Justice. And not just because it's a battle between the two most famous superheroes of all time. This is also the film that's going to kick the DC Cinematic Universe into high gear. And after the mixed reactions to Man of Steel, Zack Snyder sure has a lot to prove. But Zack can rest easy that he can't possibly go as downhill as the original Superman franchise did. You see, back in 1978, Richard Donner's first flick amazed and delighted audiences, as it truly made us believe that a man can fly. But just as Superman 2 was nearing completion, producers Alexander and Ilya Salkind suddenly decided to replace Donner with Richard Lester, with Donner's name taken off the movie completely. Despite this, Superman 2 was still a huge hit, so audiences were eager with anticipation for the next installment two years later, with Superman 3. And here, the Salkinds decided to take a more comedic and light approach with the franchise, with Richard Lester now able to flex his skills for comedy that he honed working alongside Peter Sellers and the Beatles, and having Superman star alongside none other than the legendary Richard Pryor. But despite making money, Superman 3 was torn apart by critics and audiences alike, and the franchise came to a halt, until Canon Films brought it back four years later and really killed it off for good. But hey, you guys are all complaining that this new Superman is way too dark, so maybe rewatching this movie will provide a welcome change of pace for the savior of Metropolis. Don't you agree, Lex Luthor? No! Yeah, you're right. I think we're fucked. And you know you're fucked right from the start, when you don't get the usual victorious Superman title sequence, but instead get an old-timey comedy routine of chaotic disaster building in the streets of Metropolis that convinces Clark Kent, once again played by Christopher Reeve, to change into Superman and save the day. Seriously, this is how we start our Superman movie. This! You know, why don't you just replace the Superman music with something a little more appropriate? <laughs> But then we're back to business as usual as Clark returns to the Daily Planet and bids farewell to his beloved Lois Lane, played by Margot Kidder, who is off to take a vacation to I piss the producers off by siding with Richard Donner, so they're making me sit out this entire movie. Ville. So we get a new love interest in Clark's old high school sweetheart, Lana Lang, played by Annette O'Toole, who reunites with Clark when he attends his high school reunion in Smallville. But trouble is still brewing over in Metropolis, as unemployed deadbeat Gus Gorman, played by Richard Pryor, somehow lands a job as a computer programmer, and uses his computer skills to increase his pay by taking the remainders off of people's interest from bank transactions and putting them into his account. This sounds familiar. Yeah, they did in Superman 3. Right, yeah. Underrated movie, actually. This captures the attention of the company CEO, Ross Webster, played by Robert Vaughn, who played Napoleon Solo in The Man From U.N.C.L.E., who was played by current Superman Henry Cavill in the Guy Ritchie movie. <gasps> Illuminati triple confirmed. Conspiracy. Webster decides to use Gus's computer skills to help him monopolize trade all over the world and prevent Superman from foiling his evil plans. Look, who are we kidding? This character was clearly supposed to have been Lex Luthor if it weren't for Gene Hackman joining Margot Kidder on that vacation. But that's only one problem of so goddamn many in this movie. Let's talk about the fact that the Richard Pryor part of this movie and the Superman part of this movie feel like two utterly different films that only intersect with each other halfway in. It's the same effect as if you were bored one day and kept flipping between a Richard Pryor movie on one channel and a Superman movie on the other. And I'd mind that less if Pryor scenes were funny, but they are pretty fucking far from funny. They clearly just told Richard Pryor to snort some coke and make some shit up off the top of his head. And it's one of the most cringingly awkward things you'll ever see. Hello, baby. <laughs> da, 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 da. To write a peace treaty and have his ballpoint pen bust open. And the madness doesn't stop there. They've got Robert Vaughn trying to kill Superman with a fucking game of missile command. They've got Superman doing a black handshake with Richard Pryor. Thank you, brother. <laughs> And they've got a scene where two crossing signs get in a fight with each other. This is not just a letdown from the first two movies. No, this is beating the franchise to death in front of you as you're being held down and forced to watch. Stop! Stop! He's already dead. 
But even the most wretched pile of cinematic dung has got a few flowers growing out of it, and such is the case here. For one thing, Christopher Reeve is great as usual as Superman, and gets to flex his acting muscle when Gus tries to kill him with recreated kryptonite. But since Gus is forced to use tar as its unknown ingredient, what the hell, man? I'm smoking. it doesn't kill Superman, but instead turns him evil. And not only is it fun to see Superman act like a super dick, but it also leads to a fight scene between Clark Kent and the evil Superman that's actually really well done, and would have been a great plotline for this movie to focus its full attention on if we didn't keep getting subjected to the Richard Pryor coked off his ass fun time show. I mean, Superman 4 had an excuse to suck, seeing as it was from canon films, who were famous for not giving a fuck. But this was supposed to have been the epic follow-up to Superman 2, the epic fight between Superman and Zod, and what we got was a shitty Richard Pryor comedy Trojan horse into a complete mess of a Superman movie. So if you're up for an epic disaster of Kryptonian proportions, it's pretty fascinating. But as a movie starring one of our most legendary superheroes and one of our most legendary comedians, well let's just say that it makes the Superman musical look not so bad in comparison. Don't they know? Faster than the silver bullet, more powerful than a four locomotive, it's a bird, it's a plane, no, it's the awfully good drinking game! Take a shot or drink every time they mention computers in the dialogue. Computer technology is very advanced. Now they get these plastic computers. Never underestimate the power of computers. Oh yeah, you know what computers are. Those are the things that help make a video game where all Superman does is fly through fucking rings and pick up cars. Fuck me, Superman 64 was awful. Superman does something assholeish. Oh sure, Superman fucks with the Tower of Pisa and nobody complains. But have a movie where Superman nearly levels the fucking city and everyone loses their Minds. They do some more wacky comedic hijinks. Uh, this shit isn't funny. Now that time that Batman got drunk and dressed up as Superman. I can't see my penis, can you? Oh, now that shit was funny. And take a double shot when, well, you see Superman take a shot. As well as when you see the moment that scared all of us as kids. Robert Vaughn's sister turning into a robot. Oh. Yes? But then you rewatch it as an adult and realize she looks less like a robot and more like Ronnie Wood from the Rolling Stones. But hey, the Rolling Stones are pretty goddamn scary too. <laughs> And all the nudity watch, you get some pretty nice cleavage from Robert Vaughn's ditzy assistant, as well as a nice bold shot for the ladies. Oh, I'm not talking about Christopher Reeve. I'm talking about this guy. Yeah, this guy's a DJ. More like JD for Jumbo Dick. On the enjoyableness continuum scale from Boulder Bruce, Superman 3 makes you wish Superman would fly around the Earth and turn back time so you could avoid watching this movie. And Neil's before a 3 out of 10. Richard Pryor in a Superman movie? Eh, not such a good idea. But Red Fox's Brainiac, on the other hand, you big dummy. I'm Jesse Shea for JoBlo.com. And forget Batman vs. Superman. I think the fight we all would have wanted to see was Superman vs. Richard Pryor. Bury it. I'll slap you in the mouth with my dick. My dick. <laughs>